the school that I'm working at is building on an addition, um, and so they have a dumpster right outside the school. They're throwing away a bunch of stuff. I pulled this freaking guy's throwing thing out of there. Um, I was stoked. It's it's huge. It's four foot by six foot. Um, it's definitely lived a long life, and it was in the dumpster. I grabbed it out of there. I'm going to try to give it a, another long life. Now, it's not just a chalkboard. Okay. A whiteboard, too. Um, there's scuffs here. It was thrown in the dumpster, and there were rocks and like bricks in the dumpster as well. But overall, it's in pretty okay shape. The wood is oak. The wood is uh, in bad condition, but we'll see what I can do. See if I can fix it. So my guess is that this used to be a, a whiteboard, chalkboard that could be flip-flopped like on a stand, like what I'm trying to make. Uh, but I'm pretty sure at the end of its life it was just drilled into a wall. So we have these holes here, white paint, uh, just overall a good amount of scratches and dirt we need to get out of there. And I think the easiest way to clean these up is with sandpaper. And I think I'm going to have to take this trim off. Um, that way I don't accidentally scuff up this or the whiteboard. So I'm going to try popping this loose. I believe it's held together with, uh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, it's probably also glued. Pretty sure there's also asbestos dust coming out of here now. That's all right. Asbestos never hurt anyone. Oh yeah, it's moving. That's good. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. All in one piece. So that was taking approximately forever, um, even with an aggressive disc on a DeWalt sander. So I think I'm gonna go buy a belt sander, go belt sander, get a majority of this off, then palm sander, then hand sand. And I think, uh, yeah, it's extra money. Oh no, I need to buy another tool. Um, that's an, It's gonna be the most efficient use of my time. start building the I'm gonna start building the frame um, specifically I'm gonna cut out these upright posts I found a pretty clear piece of 2 by 4 at Lowe's um, I'm gonna basically pick the cleanest part I just need 57 ish inches and uh, we're gonna call it good so I'm gonna lop off these knots and then measure it out 57 inches, cut the other end off, then rip it down the middle. Beautiful. Now these corners were held together with this little metal piece and it's called a spline or a clamp nail and I can't find these anywhere. So I'm going to have to salvage these. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I just wish I would have been able to find some because there's only three in this board and there's four corners. But uh, I'll figure something out. So I'm just going to take this piece of scrap wood. looks like I know what I'm doing. Next I'm going to put just the slightest amount of wood glue along these edges. Um, really a lot less than 
it should probably need, but I do not want any squeeze out specifically on this chalkboard. Whiteboard will probably be all right. I don't want any glue getting on here. Um, and I'll be quick to wipe any off, but I just don't want any type of adhesive on here. I feel like it'll screw something up. So that's what we're going to do. That is just such a good piece of hardware. I'm not going to work on the hardware for the board so that it can spin. Uh, my idea is this is going to go on the board. I'll weld this onto here. This goes into just a pipe that allows it to spin. The other side is either going to be the same thing or I'm also going to try something with a nut uh, so that it can be assembled easier. I don't know, we'll see what happens. I'm going to stick this to this and this to this and then we'll see what happens. Oh, you wanted a chalkboard. Lucky for you, I got one. I just hit everything with that orbital sander. Um, well, 
let's see what I end up getting up to, seeing paper wise. Right now I'm going to put these casters on the bottom. Alright, on this side of the board we have that peg. I drilled a hole in that peg and tapped it quarter 20, so now it fits this bolt. Bolt's got an Uncle Sam washer on it, and that can just screw on in there. Got a slit in the head so it can be screwed in with a flathead. Over here, we have a, a bolt. Cut a slit in there once again so I can get it with a flathead. And that goes into that nut that I welded onto this flat piece. Then I drilled a hole in there, shoved a uh, coat hanger in there that way. While this will rotate, uh, the bolt can't back out of there. So there's a very, very low chance of this board just like falling. Now, so far I've coated the whiteboard portion in beeswax. Uh, I was really just practicing, trying to get it right. Um, and I found it's, it's super forgiving. Just put on halfway melted beeswax, heat gun it, mush it in, heat gun, buff it, heat gun, buff it, call it good. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. You can watch it just kind of soak into the grain, smear it around some, hit it, smear it, buff it, hit it, smear it, buff it, and so on. Finished up the board off camera and brought it into my classroom. I uh, threw casters on both feet. They're all locking casters, so if I need to make it stay put, I can do that. To keep the door or the board um, locked in place, I 3D printed this little U shape out of TPU. It's sort of like silicone, it's like a flexible plastic. Um, you just push the board, and these little flaps can bend and it holds the board in place. I don't know how long that'll last, but it'll probably last long enough for me to think of something else. As for holding markers and chalk, um, I don't have anything. I might, if I have time, make something, or maybe I'll have a kid design something. Um, yeah, that's it.